I quit school in grade 12. Hello, 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 hello. Hey, the goddamn turn it off. Sounds good. You'd have to drink on TV? Yeah, sure. As long as we're not endorsing Budweiser. Okay, here's what we'll do. Of course, we'd probably make money. We'll drink the mystery wine. Uh, such a better looking bottle without it, too. So, do you know how many bands uh, are we rolling those, by the way? Uh, we're rolling, but I, I'm not picking up. It's fine. Can you talk to me for a second? Uh, <laughs> A bad mic? Yeah. Test one. Two. The boy named the boy in blue. You got me. Yeah. What I started to say was, you know how many bands would like to be where you guys are now? What does it feel like? You know that you guys play clubs and have some struggle with force, but not as long as a lot of bands. We're three years now together and selling lots of albums. How does that feel? Feels terrible actually, yeah. We'd much rather be back uh, <laughs> in the bar circuit. I could think you'd pick the same. You're probably on your third house now. I mean, everything's good for you. You know where you're going home to when you're out on the road. It's a good feeling. You know, it, it is a good feeling. We've been working every day since January, and I got a swimming pool, a Ferrari, and my Harley Davidson parked in my living room. What else do you need? You know? <laughs> is that true? What you're saying? No, no I drive a Suzuki, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I just bought a new car. I'm happy as hell. Seeing as I bought a new car, drove it for two weeks, and had to go back in the road for another six months. On the road, all this to time. pay for it, yeah. On, on the drum kit, we walked out before the show on the drum kit pad. You've got written Hollywood, Florida. Do you forget what city you're playing? Sometimes. You yeah, know what not, happens not is that I, often, but I, it happens. It's, it's there for me. Be, well, actually, you use it too. I have to have it because I get so into it, into it that. Uh, <laughs> what the ass? <laughs> <laughs> what the ass? Here comes another one. Oh. <laughs> right on and another one. Great. Have you actually addressed the wrong audience? Is that what happened to Yeah. So we, okay. We've been Where introduced twice wrongly. Once, when, once in Canada, we were at, in Lethbridge, and the guy said, Hey, Regina, what's <laughs> happening? And, you know, what a way to start your concert. You know? Where was it that I said, what? Oh, oh, I know what it was. We walked on in Tulsa, and I went, Tucson! Oh. And it was so close that not many people recognized it. But I said the word six times, you know, during the show. That's when we started taping the things down. Just because I get so into the show, I'm singing, and I'm up there just into it. And when it comes time, I mean, I'm just in this. When those lights come on, I'm just there. I don't even know where I am, I'm just there. And so I can turn around and know exactly where I am. I don't have to think about it. It's just there. All it takes is one second of mental lag and you said the wrong city. Uh -oh. Plus, I don't want to be thinking about it. You can always look at a guy, you can tell he's thinking about something else while he's singing a song. Well, I'm not thinking of anything else. I'm just thinking about the song. Because if I got to think about something, it's written down for me. <laughs> He's actually got all the lyrics written out, too, on <laughs> the back of his guitar. Don't tell him everything. Oh, sorry. Both of them around a lot on stage, too. He's the red bridge. He's got red clothes, red guitars. Red Ferrari. Me, I'm, I'm the red freak. I'm the red freak. So you both like the red <laughs> We have, we have three colors, supposed colors, that we started. Did. We're getting away from it right now. The three colors were no, <laughs> two, three, not two, three. We're red and black and yellow. Oh, and you did a color show over a bit on stage. Yeah. 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 Turn Me Loose, it's a great song. But yeah, it was Thank you. It really brought you into, into the spotlight for so many people that are listening to you. Yeah, I wrote that song. Yeah, I wrote <laughs> that song. Who writes the material? I write everything. <laughs> We usually, Paul and I contribute to. I write half. He to the songs. Half. Half. <laughs> well, it's different. Yeah. I wrote the bass. I started the uh, Turn Me Loose on bass just because I liked I liked to play every, everybody else's instruments to see how ma mad I can make them. And I can't. <laughs> That's not hard. And I can't. I can't. I just kept playing this. You remember how many times I played that? I played this song, boom, do, 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 which is the opening line for Turn Me Loose. A week or two anyways, hasn't it? Oh, at least. At we're, least. We're, we're practicing in this warehouse with this other bass player before Scott joined the band. And every time he would go to the, over to the restaurant that we were practicing beside to grab a grand onion and coffee, Mike would pick up the bass. And I'd sit down on the drums or something, you know. Finally, he's gone. And I'm saying, God, do you know anything else? It's got that great stop action, you know, that pause, the rest of the middle of the song. It must be a great song to perform because it embodies the freedom of rock and roll. And when you look out in the audience when you're singing that song, it really developed. 
<laughs> there goes Journey. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say, Mike? It, um, it really has to, it's developed because the song was written and arranged so that we liked it. Because we got to play it every night. And, that, and then as we, you know, we've been playing it for um, audiences, I guess, for about a year and a half. And it's just developed into, uh, it's real comfortable, you know. It's like a song that I won't get sick of, which is nice because it's on the first album and like 10 years down the road. We'll probably be still be playing it. We'll be old and gray. I'm already gray. <laughs> I'm already old. <laughs> What's the age range of the band? We can edit this out if it's out. At, at average 27. We're, we're not your typical teeny bopper band. Did you worry that when you wrote The Kid Is Hot Tonight, Where Will He Be Tomorrow, that that might have been an epitaph, God forbid, of the, the second album? That's right. It can happen anytime ah. to anybody, and no matter what kind of job they got, what kind of whatever. I don't think doing. we worried about. Yeah, it. we weren't really worried, but it's it's just something to point at it. You know, it, it's the stardom thing. It's so fleeting. You know, it's so it's true. It really is true. Actresses and stuff. They do one thing wrong, or say one or thing just wrong, one thing right. or, or just maybe they only do one thing right. Exactly, and that's it. You know, poof, gone. Next. Or they keep doing what they've been doing, and it works, and then it stops working for whatever reason. The one thing yeah. I think it's going to hang us in, like if I may be so humble is that uh, we like to just uh, get up there and have fun with the audience. We like to have the audience in there. And that's why you maybe like we, pick up we might. Pretty girls in the audience, I noticed, <laughs> too. Of course. <laughs> uh, what else is there for a lover boy <laughs> on the road? No. Who came up with the name, lover boy? Me. I did. <laughs> <laughs> It gets reaction. A lot of people hate it, and a lot of people like it. You know, so as long as there's something there, like the, have you heard anything so boring as the Mike Reno band? You know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a great name, but see the, you hear the cheers that just so came out when they said that name. Listen, you're you're international. You're selling lots of albums internationally. What what do you feel about world events and how it's influencing music on a world level? Why is the whole world rocking? I mean, haven't you toured Europe to back the sale of all these albums you sell? Nope. You're, you're scheduled to go. We did a video. Yeah. One one video. I think uh, Australia, it's really happened in Australia. We have to go over there soon. Like you have to twist my arm to go over there. Like we really like to golf on the, during the day. So when we go over there, <laughs> we'll golf because it's going to be January. It's going to be freezing in a lot of other places. It's going to be in mid of summer. Apparently we've sold a lot of albums over there. and. I think January, February, we're going to take a trip over there. And uh, tie me kangaroo down, sport. <laughs> we're looking forward to that. Yeah. I don't know about Europe. Do you? We haven't been there. We plan to go, too. That's why I was asking. We're going to be doing music news. And, like, there's this, and Russia just had this huge rock and roll festival where, I mean, Russia, the Soviet Union, they came from the Baltic states and Siberia. They hear, like, I can't remember the names of the bands. I can never pronounce it, but. Shlozet Gritsky. Guru Hagen ski. It's really on a world level now. With all the, uh, you say you haven't been out of Canada, North America. You haven't toured any of the North America. Just North America so far. So you know that North America is really a big place. You know, I've just started to learn that. It is big. People say uh, they tour England, and you know, like a road trip in England is like nothing. You know, we have a road trip. We travel for. We Six, a, eight hours. We've got a 900 every mile night. sprint to do tomorrow. You know, 900 miles, right? 900 miles. Some countries aren't even 300 miles wide. This is a big country to conquer. We've got to be look, about 4,500 miles from home right now. And we're still on one. Because we live right on the ocean. Block here. The west coast, just like 100 miles north of Seattle. That's where we live. Do you have things that you want to say in your music that you don't say? We got, we got one tune that we wrote called War Bride that we didn't want to put on this album because we felt it was a little bit too heavy for us yet. So we put Gangs on the Street on this new album, which is still pretty heavy, but we figured, yeah, it's, it's, it's okay, but War Bride was a little bit, you know. But I figured the next album will probably naturally, you know, graduate to that. Once you've got an audience, then you feel you can start to be a little more opinionated, maybe. 
it's not really opinion, it's just a mood that the music has to it. There's one thing I always like to say in the music, whether I say it or feel it, but it always comes across to me is that, like, I like um, positive things. And if we write about somebody, like DOA, for instance, a song off our first album, it's almost like saying, don't get too uh, carried away with anything. Like, don't take, like, have fun, you know? Because we, everybody has a lot of fun, but don't, like, ruin yourself and go too far and that's really the way we think it's not like we don't think that religiously it's just that if you want to kind of go the stretch you can party hardy but you don't have to go over the edge you know you can just hang right in there and just have a great time that's the way I, I sing the songs like like have a great time you know turn me loose rock hard but you don't have to get Make love to whoever I please. yeah we could do that and just have a nice, general, good time about it, you know. But keep it positive and don't get, don't get greasy and you know whatever. Right. But you see, that's Mike's attitude, and on the other see. hand, I have kind of a greasier attitude in my writing. And my kind of not my not my life isn't like that, but what I like to write about. So that we get the two of us kind of playing off each other. I'm pushing him to be greasy, and he's pushing me to be a little lighten up a bit, you know. Some some bands will write about what they live, and other bands write about things that are far removed from it. And it's, it's, it's interesting to see the contrast between which bands do. I mean, for example, Frank Zapp is so Well, for people that haven't seen us, it would be the album. The music, simply the, the music. music and the they album. like the music, they want to hear it more times. And for people that have seen us, know that we're just up there to have fun and okay. a good time. Okay. So, so they'll come back, you know? Well, bands are, I mean, your fans are now seeing you. What, what kind of this brings it back to video since now you're being seen? What kind of role do you play in the production of your videotapes? Are you acting in that production or do you say, let's oh. hire a producer, let him do it? We just did some videos uh, for the new album, our, our second album called Get Lucky. We uh, did three songs off the album, and what we do is we have a, a person to come in, a producer, and he has his crew, and they work very well together. We write the song, and in the song is a written attitude, and he just looks on as an objective observer, observer. And he, and he tells us uh, if we're doing it right to his eye because he knows what it's look, looking like on film. And what we, we recorded uh, Lucky Ones and he wanted us to kind of parade a bit. Like, Cause the tunes actually shake the shoulders a bit, you know? Cause, yeah, because it's, a, it's, it's about uh, beauty queens and the girls who come out and do the twirl in the back like this. And, and for me, it took, a, it took me about three hours to get into it. Pause. Because... Uh, Thanks, Doug. <laughs> no, I said thanks, because now we can pour a glass of wine. Try and wrap this up quick. Yeah, we got about five minutes. OK. Go on, Corey. Can I have one of your... Cigarette, Doug. Good. Did Donna bring you down a carton? She did, didn't you? Three? No, uh, one carton. Okay, you better get them lighting it, lighting this on camera here, so we have the continuity going. <laughs> the strange hand appears from offside the camera. Thanks. Two boats for tomorrow, twelve thirty. Two. We're going deep sea fishing tomorrow. Oh, that's good. Nice. You know? Yeah, a lot of bands like to do that. Never. Is that why you booked? <laughs> yeah, we, uh, <laughs> we, we book our working engagements around our recreational things, like we're doing a month in Palm no Springs courses, <laughs> so yeah. I could go golfing. We just happen to have a day off and we're here, uh, right in Miami, right in that. We're trying to work out things, so when uh, we live down here, you know, we have access to Coconut Grove and we're going to have a, a charter boat here soon when bands come down and we can have some fun and go out fishing and stuff. But it's nice when you're down here.
we've done six, I think. We did two shows in Lakeland. We did our own show, the Lover Boy show, in Panama City. Um, and here. And uh, we did a few more, but sometimes I get confused. Oh, no, we were talking about um, in the lucky ones, we had to get into the, uh, into the spirit of, for film, we had to get in the spirit of, you know, being kind of salty and stuff like that, you know, getting lucky and all that. Is it different for you to be able to, I mean, how do you feel about being a band that's never really, uh, you know, when you record it and the audience doesn't have a fix on what you're, what you're playing as to what they're seeing, uh, is that uncomfortable for you? Do you like being a band like that? Just, it's just a natural thing, you know, it's just part of it. Entertainment. We're all a bunch of hams, basically. You go up on stage, you're hamming. And we've been on Dick Clark, too. That was, that was kind of a shaker going on Dick well, Clark. Because there was, you know, like live, and there's 13 million people out there watching, and you're, so, Paul, how's everything going? You're going, <laughs> choke. You know, that was great. I thought I'd be scared for that. But the, the day I walked in, I just walked in, and it was just, Dick Clark made us feel so comfortable. He talked to us. We were getting our, like you have to do uh, a little bit of makeup to keep the shine off your face and stuff. He was talking to us like just about everything. And he came to he came to work just, after uh, just came in the cutting the room. grass, you know. He's a guy just like you and me. Final word to the MTV viewing audience. You've got 170 cities watching you right now. What do you want to say to them? Two minutes. Get lucky. Yeah, get lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting ripped on this hole. Fuck, I'm soaked. Oops. Radio! I love this end of the video.